Oh, well, this is jolly nice. It gave a sound as well, like it should have been. It was a real ding, 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 ding. Um, and it's a, it's a lovely, chunky little Roman coin. I think it's a Dupondius um, because of its thickness. And I can read on the outside quite clearly. I found a few of these recently. It's Antoninus Papias. Antoninus Pius. And I don't know what's happening on the back because ones I've had before of his have had a goddess, um, a Salus or Pax or someone, but this is someone seated. Um, but I think that will clean up perfectly well enough to be able to, um, to see what's going on there. And that's really, that's really interesting because I, I would have found that with any machine, I'm sure. I don't know why I haven't dug it up already. I found several modern coins, 20p's, 50p's of pounds, which uh, the only reason I haven't found them already is because I haven't dug them on purpose. I know that they're modern coinage. And when I'm here, when I've been here in the past, I, I don't want to dig modern coinage. I want to dig things like this. But that would confuse, I must admit. But it's an absolute belter. I mean, it's, a, it's completely beautiful. And as I said, a little bit of a surprise because if I am finding Roman coins up here, they tend to be 4th century, little 4th century bronzes. And this isn't a 4th century bronze. Antoninus Pius was, I think, 130 AD, something like that. He was the third of the, um, of the five good emperors after Nerva and Trajan. And then following him, he adopted Hadrian, I think, who in turn adopted... No, he was the fourth of the five good emperors. He was adopted by Hadrian, and in turn, he adopted Marcus Aurelius, who then decided that it, was a great, that it would be a great idea to start letting um, bloodlines do the job again, rather than a, a capable of adopted sons. And, and the, the, then you get Commodus. And if you don't know what happened there, read up about him. He was a, uh, <laughs> he was a disaster. Hi there and welcome to Headquarters. Just a very short video this week because it's between Christmas and New Year. In fact, it's New Year's Eve as I record this, whenever it comes out. Um, and I just don't have time to do a full video. But there will be one back next week. Um, I, I, I've got Tasky and, and the boy outside playing in the garden. And I'm on sole duty looking after the pair of them. So I just, I've just got my time is better spent elsewhere. But we will have a proper video next week. But what it does mean is it gives me a chance to talk about this coin. Now... I didn't find much else for that day, so I couldn't make a sort of proper beefy video out of it. But now I got the chance to talk to you about it because it, it, it's a really, really cool coin for lots of different reasons. And I'm going to have to help me today. The Coinage of Roman Britain by Richard Rees. Not only is it a good, a really good book about, well, obviously about the Coinage of Roman Britain, but the coin on the front is basically the same as the coin on on, on that, that I found that day. It's absolutely brilliant. It's also, so as I alluded to in the field, it was the third Antoninus Pius I found recently. And, and even better than that, I found the Cistercius, I found the Dupondius, and this, this is the ass. Now, looking at the, the Dupondius and the ass together, they're pretty much the same size, even though there were two Dupondii to uh, Cistercius and four asses. So, the ass is a smaller coin in, in every respect, apart from the fact that they do look very similar in size. Now, in width-wise, I mean, and weight-wise, the Dupondius is a bigger coin. There's no doubt about that. But they, you know, I don't know so much about sort of back in the day, but these days it can be very hard to tell the difference between the two, especially if the Dupondius is slightly... Gosh, can you hear Charles I was shouting away, but, uh, but, but happy shouts. Another way of telling the difference, uh, handily, was the fact that the Emperor on a Dupondius it tends to wear a radiant crown, um, and the Emperor on the ass is just bareheaded. Um, so that's just fabulous. I've got all three now, and all in really good condition. But even more importantly, I, I said it was a seated figure. It's not just a seated figure, it's the figure of Britannia. Now this makes this a really early coin to depict Britannia on it. And as you all know, the British coins um, from the reign of Charles II up until Queen Elizabeth II had a very similar picture of Britannia on it. But between the coins of the Roman Empire, because Britannia did find her way back onto coins every now and again, it was about 1700 years, or rather 1500 years, and before she appears again. The, the first depiction of Britannia comes with Hadrian, who is the adopted father of, of um, Antoninus Pius. 
Now, one of the reasons was that Hadrian really did spend a lot of time in the provinces of the empire, including those in North Africa and, and, and Roman Britain. And of course, in 19, I think it was 122 AD, he built his, well, he started building his wall. But the coins of Hadrian with Britannia are a couple of years earlier than that. And even though she's depicted sort of sitting with her shield and her standard and her spear often looking quite warlike, and sitting on what may be rocks or crags. I mean, I, we don't think that's associated with the wall necessarily. And it might be more to do with sort of image of Britain, really, from the continent, seeing all those cliffs. But in this book, we, could, we get to Aunt Britannia with Antoninus Pius. Now, he was very keen on Britain as well. And to the extent that he built a wall north of Hadrian's Wall, which is not so obvious today as Hadrian's is, called the Antonine Wall. I'm not sure if it was even finished. I don't know an awful lot about it. But that was built, I think, in 144, when the Antoninus Pius coins of Britain came out. Now, here she's sitting, she is sitting on a heap of rocks. And that could be something to do with the wall. And there is a photograph of her here, a coin of Antoninus Pius, um, with her shield looking warlike. But this coin we have here, the picture is... I mean, it's definitely this coin. It's the same one. Um, this ass of Antoninus Pius shows Britannia sitting on a heap of stones, but with her head on her hand. Some people see her as sad and brought into line after a revolt. Now, I mean, who knows? That is under some sort of scrutiny, that line of thought. Um, but it is definitely that coin. So this is Tasky. Come on, Tasky. So... So this is a really early coin of Britannia. They were minted under Commodus a couple of emperors later and intermittently, um, I think Constantine even had Britannia on his coins. But this is a really, really early depiction and it's just absolutely fabulous. And my last point before, <laughs> so I don't bore you too much, is that the coins of Hadrian with Britannia on them are found, are found from all over where the, the Roman Empire was. These coins of Antoninus Pius apparently are not. They're only found in Britain. I think I'm right in saying, which means either they were produced in Rome and then and then taken over to Britain for British use, or they were actually minted in Britain in, in, in itself. Um, it, again, we're, we're not absolutely sure, but that, that just makes this a really special coin. And the, even though we can see Britannia fairly clearly, and there's Britannia very clearly written on the legend there, um, she's not in such good condition, but I can see the, the, the rock she's sitting on and her head on her hand. The actual portrait of the empire emperor himself is, is, a, is a cracking one so these three coins together are just absolutely wonderful i mean i just feel really really lucky sometimes thank you very much for listening to that and i've got to go and deal with the boy and tasky but next week we'll have a, a, a proper video happy new year for tonight um whenever you're watching it i'm this is new year's eve now and um and see you next time <laughs>